Hi guys. Um, for module one, I want to try to give you guys um, more, well, I want you guys to focus more on making sure you're reading the chapter, making sure you're looking through the PowerPoints, making sure you're listening to those top lectures. So I'm not going to add in too much extra information um, for this section because I really, I know people were late getting their book and things like that and make sure everybody could get in. And I really want you guys to focus on kind of getting through that material. And then hopefully as we go into the next modules, I can throw in some more additional outside resources for you guys. Um, I really, really enjoyed the first discussion. I think you guys are doing a great job of finding information and I'm looking forward to, you know, kind of seeing how those discussions develop. For the most part, you guys did a really good job of doing your summaries and also commenting on other people's and asking questions. And um, it was really nice to see. So hopefully that will continue. But in regards to module one, I'm going to just kind of go briefly go over some things. But the big thing I'm going to do at the end is just kind of give you some tips and some things about the test to make sure you're ready to take it. Again, it'll be due Sunday night. I just posted it, so it is available whenever you're ready to take it. But in regards to the section itself, the big things are, obviously, in the first part, you're getting a lot of basic terminology, so you're going to have a lot of definitions. Uh, you want to make sure that you know these basic definitions and the basic terminology because that's going to help you as we go through the, the next sections. You're going to realize as we get into even module two, if you've looked at it at all, there are way fewer just vocab terms. OK, um, I'm not going to say that's going to happen in every single single module, but uh, definitely I don't know that you'll see as many of those you know, terms as you're going to see in this first part because it's trying to give you a really good overall basis. Um, Make sure anytime that there's a word highlighted in the side of the book, those purple terms, um, you know what those are. My suggestion would be in regards to the test, make sure you have the PowerPoints printed off. If the definition's not on the PowerPoint, you might make an effort to write the definition on the PowerPoint. And the only reason I say that is because if you'll physically have it in front of you, it's going to make your test go quicker as opposed to having to flip, you know, back and forth between a browser with your online book and look for those definitions. Uh, it would probably be much more beneficial to have them written down. Or like I said, put them on the PowerPoint. I mean, you can write them separately if you want to. Um, you might want to you know, maybe screenshot the pages that have the vocab, like zoom in on the vocab parts and screenshot those and have those available to you. Because the one thing that you want to remember is everything's coming out of the book when it comes to the exam. So if you Google it and you put that definition in or you answer from Google as opposed to your book, a lot of times you're not going to get credit because it's not going to be the answer that... Uh, we are looking for based on the text. So keep that in mind. But a lot of basics, um, no metabolism is when you're changing the, the substance within or by a living organism. Um, obviously, you should kind of know the process of going from a molecule all the way to an organism. If you've had any type of anatomy and physiology or biology, I'm sure you've discussed all this. So hopefully it's a it's a refresher and not something brand brand new, but know that cell is the smallest, most basic structure, a functional unit of life. Um, and then a big part of what you're going to have to do in module one is knowing like what are carbohydrates? How much are you supposed to have? What do they do for your body? Okay, water. What does it do for your body? How much are you supposed to have? Vitamins, minerals, fats, proteins, knowing those different categories, knowing what they do in our body, and making sure that we know how much we're supposed to have.
So those are going to be things, again, that you probably want to highlight or you want to go over a couple times before you start the exam so that you have a good understanding of that ahead of time. You don't want to have to really, really search all these things out or you're going to run out of time. I am giving you more time for this first exam than I normally would. Normally, it's 120 minutes. Normally, you get two hours. This one, I'm giving you 150 minutes, so you get two and a half hours just to account for that adjustment that you guys are going to have to make um, using the online book and, and some of that. Um, make sure you also pay attention to the charts and the little boxes like the bio beat boxes and any any pictures, things like that, because a lot of times I'm going to not just take information out of the reading, but possibly take information off of those things to make sure you're looking at everything as a whole. Um, let's see. Uh, just to make sure you know, the whole, the whole basic in this very, very first section is what characteristics, what are characteristics of a good diet, what are characteristics of a bad diet, um, or what things come out of us having a good, sound diet, what bad things might happen. Obviously, you guys had a lot of terminology in regards to things like cancer, stroke, heart disease, diabetes. Um, these are terms that you're going to see a lot. These are diseases that you're going to see a lot as we go throughout nutrition. Um, make sure that you kind of know what are some of the factors that affect people's choices in regards to diet and maybe how we can encourage ourselves, change our, change our habits, encourage others to change their habits. Um, and then when you get into the specifics, specifics like I said, for carbohydrates, proteins, uh, lipids, things like that. Really, the big overall thing is what do those do in our body and how much of those do we need, okay? Um, and then obviously the terminology, if you, if you pay attention to the vocab, you're going to know some of those specifics, like what's the difference between glucose and fructose and uh, sucrose and lactose. You have a whole bunch of them there. So just kind of knowing the difference between all of those things, knowing what is an enzyme. Okay, and again, if you've had some of these things in science, hopefully it's a review. If you haven't, you might need to spend a little bit more time on your terms. One of the big things I want you guys to pay attention to is the alcohol. Okay, um, what is it? How does it work in our body? Um, some of the, like, that it provides seven calories per gram. Make sure you know that. And then just kind of discussing that process in our body and um, what does it do? Is it beneficial? Is it not beneficial? Uh, you've even got a chart that talks about specific alcoholic beverages. So you might take a glance at that. Um, again, in your proteins, how much do we need? What do they do for our body? knowing some of the sources, like whenever you see animal versus plant sources, make sure you pay attention to a couple of those. In your lipids and fats, um, it's very, very important that you understand the difference between saturated, monounsaturated, polyunsaturated. Um, so I would look over that a few different times. And again, um, it's going to give you some different sources, animal sources versus fat sources. You've also got omega-3 versus omega-6. So make sure you're looking, you're looking at those differences. Um, let's see. Figure 1.13 is a good example that shows you a lot of different oils that we use and what percentage of them are saturated versus polysaturated, polyunsaturated, um, polyunsaturated three, polyunsaturated six monosaturate monounsaturated so just to make sure you uh maybe take a look at that little chart too okay um let's see understand some of the things about cholesterol that actually happen in our body and what do we actually use cholesterol for because a lot of times we forget we have uh, good sources of cholesterol we have bad sources of cholesterol so cholesterol we have internal versus external, which are your endogenous and your exogenous. Um, 
And so understand that there are some things that we need cholesterol for in our body and know what some of those things are. For example, uh, progesterone, uh, testosterone, estrogen, and then things like uh, the myelin sheath on our nerve endings. So uh, there's a, there, again, there's a little chart on that if you want to if you want to kind of review those, that would be a good thing to look at. Um, vitamins, minerals, and waters are all put together, but same thing, knowing how much of those do we need, knowing what are the things, um, what do, what do those things do for our body? Um, knowing major versus trace versus which ones are both. Okay, and there's charts again for that. That might help if you want to look at the charts instead of reading in the, obviously you need to read the text, but I know a lot of people are visual learners, so you can look at those charts. And then in that last section, well, that's it. That's the last section. So here's the thing I also want to point out. At the end of every section, if you'll notice, there's a quick review, and then it gives you take 10 reflective questions. Those take 10 reflective questions are also in your module under your extra practice. So you can go in and answer those and um, practice. Those are good examples of types of questions that you might see on the actual exam. So keep that in mind. It's a good place to review. You've also got, when you do your homework assessment, sample questions. So when you do that assignment, that is also going to help prepare you for the final exam. Um, they always give you a really good summary at the end. They give you some total recall questions, which incorporate some multiple choice, some true, false. Um, they give you that little puzzle that you can do. And all of that stuff is in that section in your module where it says extra practice and review. So don't be afraid to take advantage of that, especially if you're nervous about taking the test or you feel like it's going to take you a long time to find the information. The more you can practice those things, one, the more comfortable you're going to be with the information, and two, probably the faster you're going to be able to find it because you've had to find it before, and hopefully that makes sense. Um, so, like I said, I'm not going to give you guys a lot of extra stuff outside of that because I really want you to focus in on getting through the chapters, watching the PowerPoints, watching those take, take one, take two videos, um, but specifically about the test, just a reminder or some some heads up information you will have like i said 150 minutes which is two and a half hours you will not be able to stop and restart so you have to plan to do it in one sitting once you pass a question you will not be able to go back and when you do your essay questions you're going to notice sometimes i'm going to say if you want full full credit on this question you must provide an outside source so that means for that particular question, you might have to take a little bit of time, um, Google some outside information. You are not allowed to copy and paste it. You will see in the instructions that in any of your essay questions, if I even suspect that you copy and pasted from the PowerPoint, uh, from another document of some sort, from the internet, um, you will not receive any credit on that question. If I think that you've done that on multiple questions, you will get a zero on the test because that is uh, plagiarism, that is copying. Also, make sure you can use book notes. You can use the internet, like I said, as long as you put it in your own words and you're providing the citation. But if you use a friend, you will get a zero. Okay, I do a lot of things to avoid that. Um, I check login times. I check similar answers. I check similar missed answers. Okay, we have a lot of things in in um, policy that we do to try to make sure that that's not happening. Uh, you should need it. You have your book. You have your notes. You have your powerpoints. Like I said, I would have those printed and in front of you. I would not just try to go back and forth between your book browser and your exam because I think that might take you too long. And if you have the PowerPoints in front of you, you're probably going to be able to find at least some of that information straight from the PowerPoint. Um, even better, if you take the PowerPoint and you listen to those talks and you go through the chapter and you add in notes and you add in definitions, and then you'll have everything in paper in front of you when you go to take the exam. 
Uh, it's due Sunday night at midnight. If you have any questions, you guys have me on Remind or you can send me an email. But hopefully this first one, uh, with the extra time, you'll be able to get through it and you'll and you'll be ready and you'll know what to expect for the next ones. Like I said, if you have any questions, let me know.